Right, thank you very much indeed, Anna. Um, good evening. It is 5 p.m. on Valentine's Day. Um, I'm, my name is Darren Sanders. I'm the Cabinet Member for Housing and Preventing Homelessness. Um, everybody here has had a vague understanding of how the COVID uh, rules work within the Guildhall and the rules of the Guildhall Trust. Um, and uh, as we have no members of the public, uh, that bit can be removed of the lovely sheets that has been given to me by Anna in, in Democratic Services. So I think all I can say is, one, if the continuous fire alarm sounds, uh, please evacuate the room public gallery by the stairwells. Do not use the lifts. Please assemble by Queen Victoria Statue in Guildhall Square. Also, in case nobody knew. Um, it is live, we are indeed live, and web streamed too, so the mass hordes uh, can, uh, can watch this. So everyone speaking via microphone will be on camera. Please can everyone use the microphones, remember to switch them off when they have finished. Uh, we have apparently no deputations, uh, but Anna, do we have any apologies for absence? Uh, two from the residence consortium, St right. Jordan and Maria Cole. Right, okay, well please send them our regards. Has, is, has anyone else said that they're not coming? James? Uh, yes, um, Councillor Scott Peter Harris is unfortunately unwell, so he won't be attending the meeting. Okay, well please send him our regards and um, I hope he gets better soon, but thank you very much for that. And is that noted? Lovely. Right. Um, so I will introduce various people before we go around. So uh, the, the person I've called Anna is here. Anna Martin, Democratic Services. Excellent. Wayne. Wayne Layton, Finance Manager for Paulson City Council. Thank you. Mark. Mark Fitch, Head of Local Authority Housing for Paulson City Council. James. James Hill, Director of Housing, Neighbourhood and Building Services. Cal. Cal Corkery, Councillor of Charles Dickens Ward and Labour Spokesperson for Housing. Thank you very much indeed. Um, so we have uh, one item here today, uh, which is the Council Housing Budget Volume 2. Uh, which is the charges for garages and parking sites. Now, James is down to deliver this report, so I don't know whether you're going to do it or anyone else is going to do it. I haven't got the faintest idea. Uh, Wayne's going to introduce the report and then we'll take questions. Thank you. Okay. Sorry. Okay, so I thought you were going to say something. Okay. So this report, um, as you say, um, is a slight change to the budget report that was presented um, and, and agreed on the 24th of January. Um, in that meeting, you agreed to increase garage and parking rents by 3.1%. Um, and in that meeting, we had a... Um, we spoke about changing the charges for non-local open-air um, car parks within the city centre that potentially could compete for commuters who use the park and ride. Um, this report coming before you suggests that the Schedule 9 is the same as it was in that original report, save for those changes to the open-air the open air. Um, car parks in the city centre, which we're increasing to £14 a week, um, which is in line with, with, the, with the park and ride charge for a weekly um, commute. The um, amount of income that we collect in terms of garages and, and parking is £1.97 uh, million per year. Um, this um, change that we're making um, this year to increase Parking by 3.1% gives us an extra £61,000 contribution towards the housing revenue account. And the change that we're making from moving it from a 3.1% to a £14 a week gives us an extra 8400 So overall, the amount of revenue which we um, will receive next year if this goes through will be £69,400. Thank you for that, Wayne. Um, I, Anna from Democratic Services gently reminded me that I should have asked whether anybody has anything interesting to declare, which essentially is Cal and me, uh, frankly. Um, Cal, do you have anything, any declarations to offer us? If not, that's fine. Uh, just my usual declaration that I'm a council tenant, but I don't think necessarily. I, well, I, I know where you live, so I, I think you're okay on that score, and, and I have no interest to declare. 
So that was the sort of the officer's statement. Um, Count, did you have anything you wanted to say? Um, just briefly, that I think it's a good idea to uprate the the parking charges for for non-local um, users to at least in line with the park and ride. Obviously, the the point of the park and ride is to stop people driving into the city centre if they don't need to. Um, so it would be perverse to have a financial incentive to encourage people to on housing on council lands, which was previously the case. Um, I still think it maybe could go further, but the flip side of that is that clearly the, the park and ride needs to be cheaper because at £14 a week, I can see why people aren't using it, um, but I appreciate that's a, a discussion for another day in terms of what's actually before us in this report, I uh, support it. Thanks for that, Kelly. I think you're right. It is a discussion for another day. That day may be tomorrow. Uh, it may be another day. I don't know. Um, but no, this is fine. I mean, I... I supported this idea at the time. The idea was that we were going to discuss this at the last meeting, but some constitutional discussions meant I thought we'd seem more sensible to be open about it and, and delay it uh, till today. Um, we brought in this policy in 2014 because we wanted to make sure that we could incentivise people who lived on estates and near estates to have relatively cheap parking. At the time, the western side of the city was a real problem in terms of the overall parking strategy, hence this idea. Uh, we know there are people who, are commu who commute, um, we know people that commute for miles. Um, that's an issue we've got to face and I think in terms of fairness with the cost of living crisis that we face, this is a sensible way of saying to our tenants that actually um, there are reasonable incentives to, be, uh, to, to park in our local areas. Um, it, it is only a small amount of money. But for me, it's about the, the fairness aspects of it all, particularly with the cost of living crisis that many of our tenants are going through. Uh, so on that basis, um, I'm happy to continue this and pursue this. I'm sure we will talk about the park and ride another day. Um, but uh, I'm happy to pursue this. Uh, and I think, Anna, that is it, I believe. Yes? That's grand. Thank you so much for coming. It wasn't 8 o'clock finish. Um, but uh, have a pleasant evening as you can.